Well, that was very direct. Wait, what did, what did, what did Deshaun say? That he wasn't happy? Deshaun said that um, he is unhappy. Mm -hmm. You go from Aaron Rodgers, and then you come to the Las Vegas Raiders, not only Jimmy G, but you had your boy Carr, and it just didn't quite work out. So now I just don't think he's really that happy there. Okay. So obviously, Devontae disagrees. What do you think about this, Keyshawn? Well, hmm. uh, maybe Deshaun saw something that he thought, seen. Maybe he was at a game. Maybe he saw a clip. That he that, interpreted as Devontae being unhappy. interpreted that he was unhappy. I know for a fact he's not unhappy. Because I know Devontae very well. Devontae was with me early on this year on my podcast. Um, and we talked about just everything. Um, about being a Raider mm -hmm. and why he wanted to be a Raider. Uh, he grew up, obviously, in the, in the uh, Bay Area. And he's a lifelong Oakland Raider fan and now Las Vegas Raiders with his entire posse, family, whatever you want to call it. Most importantly, though, his grandmother. His grandmother is the main reason he's a Raider. Because she grew up, obviously, as a lifelong Raider fan, gets the opportunity to see him perform from a short drive from Oakland to Las Vegas. And on top of that, the reason, not the reason, but one of the main reasons Pierce, Antonio Pierce is the head coach is because Max Crosby and Antonio, I mean, Devontae jumped on the table yeah. to Mark Davis and said, man, you got to hire this dude. What the hell's wrong with you? And so they fought, fought for it. Now, if you told me that he would have preferred them to maybe draft Jaden Daniels instead of the tight end or figure out a different quarterback instead of Minshew and, and what they already had, then I would probably go out on the limb and say, yeah, he probably would prefer maybe a, um, what's the word that I'm looking for, a, uh, a veteran quarterback that's probably a little more solidified and has some skins on the walls. Yeah, he probably would like that. But he's not unhappy in Las Vegas. He actually just built a beautiful home in Las Vegas, so I, I can't see where he's unhappy. Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably the the wording. Because, um, yeah. again, I, I was thinking about this morning, like, it, it, we talked about this in the meeting. Mm -hmm. You're a competitor. Right. You want to win. Now, he, individually, nothing has changed for him. He's an all-pro. He's putting up numbers. He's still one of the top receivers in the league. He's being paid as such. All of those things are still he happening. He might be underpaid. I got to look. Yeah, he probably is. <laughs> but... You always want to play with great players. Like, mm -hmm, you want to be course. able to compete with the best. And if we're just being frank and speaking objectively, they don't have the best quarterback situation. And this is a reliant position. Yeah. You always say it's not just the quarterback you're relying on. You're relying on 11 other people because yeah. the offensive coordinator also has to be good in order for yes. you to do your job. Absolutely. So that's how good Devontae is, yes. that he is excelling in all these situations. So it, to say he's disappointed in the current back quarterback that's situation okay. or something, like all those things are lighter versions of saying he's just unhappy overall in Las Vegas. But what, what do you think about the situation? See, me being... <clears throat> The ultimate competitor who's played at the highest level in my sport, who was a great player on bad teams, I would have called this BS, you know, because he's making, like you say, he's making all the money, done that. Pro Bowl, done that. He wants to be or have an opportunity to win. Well, he should have won Las Vegas. Well, the thing is, and that's not, I mean, like, so originally I thought he wasn't happy, but, you know, not being happy doesn't mean he's not going to go out there and play hard and practice hard and that he won't say it publicly, though. But I was watching that interview, and I thought it was BS, but he put it on his kids. He said, I put that on my kids. Oh, I was going to go there. Hey. I was once gonna, he said that, yeah, I was going to let you, I was going to let you finish, hey, look, and I was no going to beat T. Joy back up with hey, that listen, one. No, look, look, when a player you know, say, yeah. I put that on my mama, I put that on my kids, I believe it. Because I thought it was BS at first, but... You don't throw that around lightly? I, you don't throw that around lightly. No, you once don't play, say there's that, certain things you don't play with, though, Joy. Oh, you know that. Say that right? no. You just don't... Uh-uh. You don't... You, you, certain things you just don't play with, no, and your yeah. kids is one of them. Yeah. You look, it's two things. You're going to say... This is, look, you ever come across somebody and say, hey, listen, I saw my mama, or I saw my kids. 
you better believe what they talk about. Well, <laughs> y y yes, in this case, I would. When somebody says that too much, I'm like, right, right, right. Everything ain't on your mama and your kids. You can just talk. Like you, you, you don't gotta always prove it. I do think that they they are in an interesting situation though this year because they don't have the the most advantageous quarterback position. But this is something where the expectations might change a little bit because now Pierce really is the coach. Yeah, the expectations. Okay. So here's what Antonio Pierce has done as a head coach. He's aligned himself with a couple former head coaches to come in and be somewhat of his mentor, Marvin Lewis mm -hmm. and Tom Coughlin are around and in the building. So he leans on those type of guys to help him move it to the next level. The one thing that Antonio Pierce is, is an ex, an ex player who understands the player feelings because mm -hmm. he's been in it. So they respect that. They're going to run through a wall for him because there's no nonsense. He ain't coming out there with that lying to you and playing them coaching games. He's not doing that. Okay, he's actually one of them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? He's one of them. So if he says something, and I was so funny because I'm really good friends with AP, and we was talking, and I was talking to him about one of the games he coached in last year, and he said some derogatory things toward one of the players because the player fit was messed up and run fit. He kind of got out of position and dude had a big gash, and AP went ham on him. And I told AP, I said, man, what you doing? AP said, you know, keep blah, 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 talking to me a certain way that we talk. And the player responded the next play in a positive light. He gave him a tongue lashing. Mm -hmm. And if you're a lip reader like me, I'm watching it, and I knew exactly what he said to him. But that player responded. And all they could do after the play was over, come to the sideline, hug, because they respect that. He knows he's not talking down to him. He's getting him to do what it is that he's teaching him how to do it. So, so it, it's a certain respect that you have for guys like that. That's why I think the Raiders are going to approach it with a certain style. Devontae will still get his catches. He may not have 115 catches. He may have only 80, but them 80 are going to be so important to the team because, again, they're going to play defense. Yeah. They're going to run the football, and they're going to allow the quarterback not to make any mistakes. Well, building that trust with your players is super important, and he clearly had already had that groundswell going when they made the coaching shift. Yeah. Like, the culture was obviously very, very bad. Like... Really? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aside from the, them not playing well, when players are, are that relieved to get out from under a coach, because sometimes you can be playing well and a coach can leave mid-season, I'm being gentle, get fired mid-season, and the players aren't necessarily happy about it because they know that they're the, they, they either feel yeah. like they're the reason that they're not winning or they like the coach and they feel like there's some other things going on, and that was clearly not the case. Like, AP had everyone from day one. Yeah. So he's earned the respect of the players to be able... Because everybody can't talk to you like he's, that. He's one of them, though. Yes, but you also have to, you also have to earn the, the, the respect in the building, I think, as well. Like, being just a former player... Or you tell me, being a former player is, to me, not enough. Like, I, I can match well, up here, here but, here, but you have to earn the respect to come and be able to tell me, not only are you messing up, but I'm going to talk to you this way, and then at the end of it, you know how I'm going to respond to you. I'm going to match that with, with some empathy and, and, and emotion that isn't just yelling. You can, be, you can be a former player and be a bad coach, because many of them are. That's actually what I'm saying, yeah. is that you, you, you can be a former yeah. player and not actually be good at what you're doing. Yeah, because, because when somebody tells you, gives you a tip or a point or, or a note, and you know they don't know what they're talking about, yeah. they better say it with the right but amount of bass in their voice. it's hard to go against a guy like AP who's been there, who's done it. He's yes. been in the foxhole. He's been down in it. So it's hard to go against a guy like that that is only trying to get the best out of you. And it's I still brand new. Yeah, it's still, still brand new. new. Yeah. But so, what he's not going to do... It's honeymoon stage. What he's not... Is, I love it, because I love it. What he's not going to do, though, is turn into a coach coach, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. What yeah. I mean by that is he going to all of a sudden act like he don't know you. No, that's not the case. Because that's what coaches do. They go from one yeah. position to the next, and all of a sudden they don't... <laughs> Your which, coach did that? Man, that's how coaches are all the time, <laughs> Paul. You know that. They, they the third assistant on the bench. They become the head coach. They act like they don't even know you. You know how they go. Because they become more upper management, so to speak. AP ain't doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He the only coach. I told him, I said, man, you the only coach in the history of the NFL with a tattoo on your neck with an earring. <laughs> you the only one. And the players love that. I mean, yeah. there because... a lot of, but look at this. Is there a lot of former black coaches, head coaches in the NFL? 
Is, is there a lot? Yeah. Uh, the number we only no. have right now, I think there's only four. If okay. I, if off the top of my head, I got I to gotta do, it's either four, maybe five. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, the situation is, is unique. But, she, but, plus but. It's fresh, you know, because a lot of players, because in my situation, there's a lot of in, former NBA players that are coaches. And early on, you endorse them. You know, the relationship is fresh. You know, and then but especially only him being two. a black coach and Devontae Adams being your star, you know, it's only right that he endorses him. Sure, but also well, like, like for, when, ain't endorsing your ass if you can't coach. <laughs> yeah, you so can't that's, relate. That's what I'm yet, saying. Like when yeah, shift... I do. I've been around you long enough yeah. to know you can he coach. He was in the building. That's he what I'm saying. When, when the shift okay. happened, it was very obvious yeah. that he had already established a real relationship with the yeah. players before the firing happened yes. of McDaniel's. Like when the sh when the shift happened, it was obvious they respected him. They uh -huh. felt like he should get the opportunity. They backed him up to do that. So he was in the building doing good work, other than just you know creating a relationship. With them. What did you drive to the stadium, vehicle-wise? <laughs> just, just give me a car. Like what? Our, any any uh, car. Uh, a Hummer back in the day. So you drove you drive a Hummer. I drove a Hummer. You know what AP drives to the stadium? What? A Lolo. I, I had one of those too. But he's a stadium. coach though. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He ain't trying to be something that he's not. He's, yeah. he's authentic. He still think he's yeah, playing. He absolutely no, it's is. not that he thinks he's playing. He's just being authentic. But he's players, also he's also getting results as well. And he's like it's not just this isn't can just like they can relate. everyone is friends. You gotta and be a player's like, coach, man. You can't be out there. That's why I think at some point Gerard Mayo, speaking of a black head coach, is yeah. is in New England. I think at some point in time he'll be a good head coach because he can relate to the players because he's been in the foxhole. Right? Yeah. Doesn't mean because you hadn't played in the National Football League, because many coaches that played in the National Football League has gone on to be Great, yeah, and, and celebrated as such. But certain guys, you just know, they get it. What is what what makes a good coach to you? I just think like, for me, it's just like he says, don't become a coach, coach. No, don't it's become like, a coach, you, coach, man. Like, let's talk. <laughs> let's look yeah. me in the eye as a man. Yes. If you have a problem with me, and you understand what I go through because you've been through a lot of stuff that I've been through because mm -hmm. you know what's going on on the court and you know what's going on with. <clears throat> You can understand what's going on with family, friends, and stuff that stuff that doesn't get talked about. So if I come into practice and I'm not really in a good mood and I'm dealing with family situations, back my like, you know, take the day off. You know what I'm saying? And that's the player's coach right there. When Sean McVay got hired, and I know Sean from playing days and whole deal, when he got hired by the Rams, we had a, a, a very in-depth conversation. One of the things he said, what is it that I should keep? What, what do you think it is that I should do? I said, be you. Don't try to be the mother dudes. Do it the way you have always done it. Because the moment that you try to be something that you're not, they're going to see right through mm -hmm. you. They're going to see right through you. They ain't going to never tell you, but they're going to see right through you, and they're going to know, and they're going to start working hard for you. You know what I'm saying? You want to be able to have an open-door policy, man, come up to my office anytime and holler at me. Don't, you know, coaches be having their doors closed and the window that they got right there, they got a little piece of paper on it. No, no that's what they do. And then, and then it's not inviting. Yeah. And that's not Antonio Pierce. So I think in the end, the Raiders are going to be, they're going to be right in the mix for that second spot behind Kansas City. That's what I believe. Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.